I'm going to hand out uh, some slips of paper. And on these slips of paper, what I want you guys to do is I want you to write in the to area on this slip of paper, I want you to write the name of somebody on the other side of the room. Now, we probably have forgotten everybody's names at this point. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand these out and then I'm going to have people stand up one by one and say their first name. And you can write their first name on it. Then in the from column, I want you to write your name. You should have a two person on all three of your slips of paper. And you should have from and your name should be on there. So all of our messages go to the same person? All of your, this is going to be one message. It's just going to be split up over three packets. Ah, yeah. So there should be a time to live section. Right next to the E in time to live, I want you to write the number 16. And then after the number 16, I want you to put a colon. On all three. On all three. Time to live, TTL. The TTL value for this activity is 16. So write the number 16 right next to the E in the time to live at the bottom of your slip. Now here's where the creative part comes in. I want you guys to compose a message of between 50 and 75 characters and one letter per box, including spaces. I want you to write your message over the three slips of paper. So compose a message. It could be what a wonderful person you think Jeff Baker is or something like that or whatever message you want to send. We just need between 50 and 75 characters. And, we'll start here. Yeah. and you start on the first one and you go to the second one. And where your message begins, where it says message split one slash one, you will circle. On the first page you use, you will circle one slash one. And then when you go to the second slip of paper, as you continue your message, you will circle one slash two. And then when you keep going on, you will circle one slash three for your third page. So I know that's kind of confusing because there's a two slash two in between the one slash two and the one slash three. Ignore the two slash two for the purposes of this exercise. So this will be our, our one message that we're sending, and we're going to split it up into three packets. One one is your first packet, the first part of your message. One two is your second packet, the second part of your message. And 1-3 is your third packet, the third part of your message. And Do you have to fill up every box on the first one? No. Well, yes, yeah, you need to fill up every box on the first one, but you won't fill up all of the boxes on the last one. Okay. So you don't have to put something in every box on all three packets. What about space? A space needs to be left, you just leave a box empty. Or you could draw a little underline at the bottom if you wanted to. So you can have period You can have period, you can have punctuation. So a period would take up a box. Yeah, pretty much what you're doing is you're filling each each little box is uh, the equivalent of what an ASCII character could hold. So if I were doing this activity in an actual classroom with high school level students, one of the things I would be sure to tell my students is when you send a message to what for to this other person that you're going to send it to, make sure that it is school appropriate and positive so that we don't hurt anybody's feelings and so that I don't have to discipline you. After you get done uh, writing your messages, what we're going to do is each person in this room is going to act as a router. And if you're not sure what the term router means, hopefully this lesson will give you an idea by the time you're done. But at every point within this activity, you're going to have some papers. Okay, If you have people sitting to the left and to the right of you, in whatever fashion you choose, you need to divide the papers up and pass them. If you have somebody sitting in front of you or behind you, in whatever fashion, you need to, to divide your papers up. And we're going to pretend like there is um, optic fiber connections between these two rows. So Bucky, when you get ready to pass, you need to also be ready to pass stuff to Wade, who's across the aisle from you. So you've got three people. right? I'm not getting ready. We're not ready to pass yet. I'm just explaining. You've got three people that you'll be passing to. So if y'all look at Bucky, Bucky has three different ways he could pass. He could pass to the left, to the right, or forward. Okay? 
Pam's got four different ways she can pass. She can pass forward and backward or to the right or to the left. Remember, this area right here, fiber optic cables. So when you're passing your packets, I would almost prefer that you turn them over and not look at who they're supposed to go to. And it'd be kind of almost random. Now, at some point, I guess you've got to look through all your packets because if you get a packet with your name on it, you're supposed to keep it. Okay? But I don't want you intentionally trying to guide the pieces of paper in the direction that they're supposed to go. There's supposed to be some sort of element of randomness to how all of this stuff floats around the room. All right, after you pass a group of papers, and what I'll do is I'll say pass, and then we'll do something, and then I'll say pass, and we'll do something, and then I'll say pass, and we'll do something, and at some point I might say pause because something has to happen, and then we'll pass and do something. As every time you pass, you need to, on all of the packets that you receive, you need to put a tick mark in the time to live column. So a tick mark goes in the time to, to live column. So the number 16 is how many times this packet is going to get passed before it dies, before it gets lost into the, the randomness of the cloud. Oof. So nothing is going to get passed more than 16 times. So you need to record. When you receive, now don't put any marks starting. When you pass your first packets, the person who receives them, all the packets that they get, they'll put a tick mark next to it. And so y'all are familiar with tick marks, right? So it's like a slash, a slash, a slash, and then the fifth one goes diagonal, and then slash, 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 and the fifth one goes diagonal. But you keep it if it's yours. So if you get something that's yours, you, do, you don't pass that one. You just set it aside. Split up your packets into however different many directions they're going and go ahead and make the first pass. You can go whichever way you want. You need to, you need to get all the different directions. All right, so now in front of you, you should have a bunch of papers. You can have more than you had last time, or you can have less. I want you in the time to live column, I want you to um, put a tick mark. Now, unfortunately, Wade, you have really, really old parts. And so, Wade, what I want you to do is I only want you to pass every other time. So, Wade's Wade's a slow router. He, he might bottleneck some things, but Wade's going to hold on to his, and he's only going to pass every other round. All right, go ahead and make your second pass. Divide up your stuff and however you want to, and at this point, you can pass across if you want to. Okay. Can I pass to him? Oh, that's right. Yes, now we're around two. No, don't go diagonally. Straight across. Don't diagonal. Oh, look at that. That's okay. If you did it once, don't do it again. My apologies for being unclear. So you can't pass. So she can't pass. No. You can. Well, actually, there's four routers here, so you probably don't have anybody behind you. And he's the second one, so he's in front of you. So you can pass front, left, or right. Okay, that's fine. So you could have passed front, left, or right, but since there's an empty chair behind you, there's nobody, there's no router there. All right, so mark your time to live. Um, yes? Does the dysfunctional router destroy one of the ticks? No. Okay. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you go ahead and mark the time to live. Okay. So you go ahead and make a, make a, a the mark. The ones I have, they haven't moved. That's fine. Okay. All right, make your third pass. Oh my gosh, we have had a storm. And Wendy, in your area, power is out. So on this, just this next pass, you can't pass. So you need to wait one round to pass. All right, everybody's marked your time to life for the third one. Yes? Do I pass everything or still just the Everything. Three? You split everything up in half and just pass. suddenly get really quick? Well, stuff suddenly goes out. Okay. So go ahead and make your third pass. You're looking for your name, right? 
Yes, and you're looking looking for your name as stuff goes around the room. So mark your time to life, and then we'll get ready to do the next round of pass. So make sure that you're dividing your stack up into as many directions as you can pass it. So mark your time to life, and then we'll get ready to do the next round of pass. So make sure that you're dividing your stack up into as many directions as you can pass it. Uh, yeah, she just misses one turn. Uh, what you're going to do is the ones that somebody handed to you, you tick mark and give them away, and then somebody's going to give you some new ones, and then you'll immediately give them away. So did you have any to start this round out? No. Okay, so you, that's just what you just got. So just go ahead and don't put a tick mark on them. Just go ahead and distribute them. And you, there's no lag on yours. Right. Now you're sending you're sending your whole bunch. You're giving him. me he everything. You got to distribute. Go you got to distribute. Yeah. So okay. if you have three, so if you don't have enough to give everybody one, then everybody then everybody will only get one. Okay. No, it's just got to be people that are next, right? Okay. Okay. So here's another thing that I forgot to mention that you might want to make sure that you mention to your class. Never pass a packet back to the person you got it from. Because no routers will ever do that. So you're not going to switch back and forth one, one single message. Okay. Try not to send a packet back to the person. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and make another pass. So what time to life are we on? Five. Five. Make sure all the packets you have have five tick marks on them. The repairman has showed up and upgraded you, so you are now normal. You're acting like everybody else. <laughs> if you've got one with your name on it, now, when you say get yours back, so it's like it's like one that you sent out. If you got if you get one that you sent out, you got to send it back out. But if you've got one that's addressed to you, then you keep it. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and make the next pass. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take this lesson to its conclusion. We're not gonna go all 16 times. How many people have already got all three of their packets or have gotten any of their packets? How many people have gotten any of their packets? So we've got about three people that are already receiving those. And didn't you say you got all three of yours already? All three of them. So as, as you can see from this lesson, sometimes traffic um, is it doesn't always get to exactly where it's gonna go. So sometimes the traffic will slow things down, things get routed around. If you have issues where you have a storm then they have to find other routers to go different things. So everything is not traveling at the same speed. And you're wondering about, well, what happens, if, what happens to these packets that don't actually reach their destination? Well, now you don't have a complete message. Your email isn't, isn't big. And usually there's some checks and balances within the protocol that exist to where the receiver will send out some information and say, hey, I didn't get all of my message. Could you resend it, please? And then the whole process starts over, over again and, and until you actually get it. So sometimes when you're sitting there and you're waiting forever for your email to load, maybe there's some routing issues that's causing that, or maybe it's your bandwidth speed, I don't know. So I hope that this has given you guys a good illustration of how actually messages are actually constructed, and, or information is actually con constructed and passed. Now, uh, one of the things that you can do to modify this lesson is you could go to the store and you could get one of those children's puzzles. And instead of passing around handwritten messages, you could have like five different puzzles going and you could write a, a to and from person on the back of the puzzle. And you could have the puzzle pieces go around the room until you can construct a puzzle on one end to the other. Because this just isn't email. This is videos, this is photos, you know, any kind of digital representation, any kind of media that you can uh, represent digitally, it's split up into packets and that's how it goes out through the internet. Uh, another thing you could do is you could take a picture and you could cut the picture up into pieces and you could turn the, the over on the back you could write who it goes to and then you could you know have the pictures move through the classroom from one end to the other to illustrate the concept. And so we've given you a lesson plan to basically teach this lesson to your class um, and also a bunch of supplemental resources to teach the process um, with the lesson, with the, with the activity. So this is a take home that you can take away today and this is something that maybe you can incorporate in your class. Does anybody have any questions? What would be the length of 
average length of time in classes would take? Oh, well, you know, we spent about 20 minutes doing it here. There's probably going to be the same amount of questions and setup and stuff like that. So it really kind of depends on the size of your class and, and, you know, what kind of questions your kids would ask. I would block out anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes. And if you, you know, you see we, we didn't even get close to the 16 mm -hmm. figure. So you might want to reduce the time to life number uh, if you have a short amount of time. I would come in and maybe do this, this activity uh, and think that that's going to be the entirety of the lesson that day. And then you can debrief it the next day and you can do the, the supplemental stuff on the, on the activity uh, on the lesson page. The videos and stuff. Yeah. And you might want to do some stuff before you do this activity and some stuff after. So we've kind of given you a guide, but you can modify this however you want. Yes? So is the idea that within 16 times most people should, should be getting there? Well, the idea is within six, there, there's a certain amount of, of virtual life a, a packet has. So after it's been out there for a while, it, it's going to just disintegrate on its own. It's not going to, because what happens if you get these things that, that just get caught in an infinite loop and keep going from router to router and never get anywhere? Well, if there wasn't some mechanism in place to remove them, then all of these fragments that start getting stuck are going to start clogging up the network, and then the network gets bogged down and is useless. So there's, there are things in the protocol that says if you've been out there too long, you get deleted. You get destroyed. And then it sends back in. And then, and, then, and then when you have the check message, it sends back and says, hey, I didn't get your message. Did you resend it? But 16 is not, though, probably not a reasonable no. number of times for it to be transferred. It's no. Like no. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is a simulation. And these are not actual values at all. This is just this is just a, a way to model what's what's going on. And is this unreasonable, like a number of bits of the? Yeah. For, well, the, I mean, how, I, I'm not sure how how something decides to split up the packets. That's that's a little bit more detailed than we want to get into. But okay. yeah, it, the larger file size you have, the more packets it's going to get split up into. Obviously, so a, a video, you know, could have. I don't know, thousands, millions, probably high millions, high millions of packets. So I mean, depending on how These long. These are videos. the 1,500 bits. Or something. So this, yeah, this is. Well, we'll be that far off. When you consider how many bits are in the all the ASCII conversions. Well, right. <clears throat> little bitty pieces. Little bitty pieces. <laughs> <laughs>